Hello, I'm excited to talk to you about what you might have missed in 2023 as it relates to human resources and employment law. So this is our next segment of Ask Deets. We do these periodically when people have questions and we're hearing the same themes over and over. Sometimes it's our clients, our friends, our referral partners. And we've had a lot of people say, what were the big employment actions or legal actions or trends that are impacting HR in 2023? So as we're rolling into a new year, here are some things that you might have missed. I'm Shauna Lake. I'm the founder and principal consultant here at Deep in Talent Strategies. We're an HR and learning consulting firm supporting organizations across North America. So today I'm going to talk about some best practices in every new year and then dive into some things that are more unique to 2023 and as we move into 2024. First, if you plan to update your performance review processes or tools or forms, I would encourage you to think about the impacts it ha has on compensation, the tie between perhaps ratings and compensation or performance discussions and compensation, and then particularly if there's a tie between the two, encourage I encourage you to make those changes at the start of a performance year. So if you do performance reviews, perhaps in December, January, February, or the first quarter to wrap up the previous year, I would complete that cycle as you've done it in the past and then roll out the changes that you'd like to see. When we change processes and things right before we conduct performance reviews, and again, when there's a tie into compensation, it can feel like we're playing a game without knowing the rules. So if you're thinking about making changes to performance management, Again, I would encourage you to do that at the start of your performance year. Next, get those benefit forms if they're still on paper, filed away, and generally clean up your paper or your digital files. And also shred any I-9 forms for terminated employees that are more than three years old. In case you're not keeping up to date on employment law posters, there were about 135 labor law poster changes over about 30 states just in 2023. So ensure you have up-to-date physical posters in every work environment and every physical workspace, and then a digital subscription for all of your remote team members. It's also a good time of year to reset your PTO and leave balances or accrual formulas. You may have employees hitting those employment milestones where they're gonna bump up into the next tier of benefit. So we'll wanna make sure that all of those calculations are accurate. And we also see a retirement plan uh, contribution limits increase every year. So for 2024, simple IRA contributions um, are capped at 16,000. And for 401ks, 403bs, 457s, and most other retirement plans, employees can contribute up to $23,000 pre-tax. The Social Security tax with withholding, withholding limit is also increasing for 2024. It's going up by $8,400. So you'll stop calculating or withholding Social Security tax after someone has earned $168,600 in the calendar year. And when was the last time you looked at your employee handbook? If it's been more than two years, I would put that on your 2024 work plan and job description should be kept current. In a few minutes, I'm going to tell you about a potentially significant change to the exempt wage threshold, which may prompt you to review job descriptions and reclassify some folks as non-exempt. Let's look at some workplace trends that have been building for a while and really impacted us in 2023. First, 25% or one in four American workers to change jobs or left the workforce in 2023. Of those, many are women who are join, joining the gig economy and people are, are leaving full-time positions to work in contract freelance or part-time roles every day. In fact, there are nearly 100 million Americans who don't work a full-time job for someone else, else yet they're making a living as part of the gig economy. One of the drivers and the benefits of the gig economy is the flexibility that it can provide. The pandemic accelerated that shift towards hybrid and remote work environments. In 2023, a lot of organizations were still refining those models and focusing on balance and productivity and employee well-being, but we also know that across the United States, worker productivity is down. So businesses are trying to strike the right balance. We're also watching a related trend. 
the Society for Human Resource Management found that in 2023, or in, in a year from 2022 to the mid part of 2023, 50% of all candidates who accepted a job offer changed their mind before their start date. So we're working on ways to try to keep people engaged post offer. And the reasons that people are giving are, are that they're still looking for more flexibility, so they're holding out for a job with better balance, and compensation is a factor as well. There's also an increasing emphasis on mental health in the workplace, and employers are adopting more supportive policies and providing resources to address employee mental health and stress management. And diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives continue to be a major focus, with companies striving to create more inclusive environments and addressing systemic inequality. A trend that we're watching is organizations changing the order of those words and putting inclusion at the forefront. So inclusion, equity, and diversity, including the Society for Human Resource Management. While the business value of inclusive, diverse, and equitable work environments is proven, jobs that focus on IED are disappearing at a rate faster than a lot of other occupations. And while companies encourage employees to bring their whole selves to work, that means that religious expression is becoming more common, creating both comfort and conflict. And 70% of employees believe that it's important for their organization to focus on inclusion, yet corporate training of watching a video once a year or bringing in a guest speaker from time to time just isn't working. A Gartner study showed that 44% of employees agree that at least one of their colleagues has felt alienated by their company's focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion and the training that they've, they've undertaken. So it's time to change our focus on creating a sense of belonging among employees that can translate to greater productivity, more innovation, and better decision making. And then silos and those us versus them thinking can decline when people feel more connected. I'm going to cover some key actions from 2023, and I'll do my best to point out who they apply to. Please note that our goal here is to make you aware of these items and encourage you to speak to your internal and external resources. This is not intended to be legal or tax advice. First, we have the SECURE Act 2.0. It establishes automatic 3% enrollment for most new retirement plans. And over time, the hours that a part-time person should work to be eligible for your plan will decrease. Next, 20 states have legalized cannabis for recreational purposes and nearly 40 for medical purposes, which is forcing employers to revisit policies about cannabis use and drug testing. And 11 states have paid leave family laws, paid family leave laws. As you likely know, the federal FMLA leave provides for up to 12 weeks of job protected unpaid leave for those who qualify. Sometimes we have short-term disability or PTO or other paid leaves that can run concurrent with FMLA. But these states that have paid leave programs sometimes have different eligibility criteria. They also run concurrent with FMLA. And the benefits that are paid out by the state plan are usually not employer paid. Instead, the employee and sometimes the employer are paying into a state pool of dollars. So it's important if you're a multi-state employer to keep track of which states have these family leave programs. Know if you have a payroll tax withholding obligation for these state plans and keep track of the eligibility requirements because again, they don't always follow the federal FMLA guidelines. And then let's turn to I-9 forms. So these are new hire forms that ver verify your eligibility to work in the United States. During the pandemic, the requirement to physically inspect those ID documents was paused, and it was acceptable to view them over a phone or a video camera. Well, that rule expired, and effective August 1st of 2023, you had to revert back to physically seeing the documents, and there was a new form to use. So there's also a requirement to go back and see physical documents for your current employees when they were hired during that three-year period and you viewed those documents electronically, you should go back and see them, uh, see the physical documents. And there are two ways to adjust to this requirement if you have virtual or remote employees. We still have this requirement to physically see the documents. So the first way that you can get around this is to be an E-Verify employer, which you might also, you might be anyway. A lot of states require employers to be E-Verify and to hold some state and federal contracts, you have to do E-Verify. So if you're already doing that, then you can continue to see those ID documents electronically. 
but you still need to see the originals, not photocopies. The other way that you can have remote employees and comply with the new regulations is to identify an authorized representative, someone that can come in contact with your new hire, could be a family member, a roommate, could be a third party that you engage. You fill out a form identifying them as your authorized representative, then they can see the physical documents and they can sign on behalf of the employer on the I-9 form. Next, let's talk about money. In approximately 25 states and municipalities and counting, you must post wage and salary ranges for all internal and external job postings. Whether it's mandated or not, Indeed.com reports that as of December of 2023, 50% of all job postings do contain salary information. And while that might scare you a little bit, if you don't, the algorithms for all of the major job boards will estimate a pay range for your applicants. And wouldn't you rather control the narrative? And some people say, but Shauna, then employees are going to know how much their peers make. And guess what? They already do. And you certainly can't have a policy or try to limit what employees say about their employment experience, including their wages, because that's a violation of the National Labor Relations Act in all 50 states. And do know that union membership is on the rise. So there continues to be momentum at the federal um, level and at some state levels to um, prohibit the use of non-compete agreements. And several states have passed laws to, um, to say that you can't have non-compete agreements and other restricted covenant, co restricted covenants are not, uh, are not permissible. The National Labor Relations Board has found that those broad clauses that are often in severance agreements about non-disparagement and confidentiality violate an employee's right to engage in concerted activity and are therefore unlawful. So if you have a severance agreement templates that haven't been reviewed by legal counsel in about a year, it's time to do that. And the Speak Out law passed in late 2022 makes it illegal to prohibit any current or former employee from sharing information about sexual harassment or assault settlements. And finally, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC, has an increased budget to pursue allegations and cases of discrimination. Of particular interest to the commission is pay discrimination, pay discrepancies, and pregnancy discrimination. In addition, religious discrimination cases used to be 3.4% before 2021 of all EEOC cases, and uh, as of now, they are 18.8% of all EEOC place, cases. And here's a, a bit of unfinished business that we're going to watch closely into 2024. The Department of Labor has been working on updates to how independent contractors are defined. There were, was a public comment period that expired in October. The final proposed rule is now sitting with the White House Office of, of Management and Budget, OMB. We don't know when it will become law, but it does matter because independent contractors are not subject to minimum wage and overtime loss. We're also closely watching proposed changes to the required weekly salary that someone must earn to be classified as exempt and therefore not, not subject to overtime provisions of the Fair Labor Standards Act. How much someone earns is just one part of the equation. The proposed changes would take the minimum weekly salary for an exempt person from $684 a week to $1,059 a week, or $55,068 annually. This change would make approximately 3.4 million Americans eligible for overtime who aren't today. And the proposed rule is in the Federal Register. There were over 33,000 people who made public comments in the 60-day period between early September and early November of 2023, and it's unclear when the final rule will be published, but we'll be following that closely. And as I mentioned, it's only a part of the conversation and the decision as to whether or not someone is truly exempt and therefore not subject to overtime. So there are three, three factors, three different tests. The first is the salary level test, which we just talked about. The second is the salary basis test, which means that someone is going to earn the same amount of money every week, regardless of how much they they work. They may work 100 hours. They may work a standard 40. They may send one email or one text message. And if they're truly exempt, they're going to get paid the same amount every week, no matter how much they work. The third factor is the duties test. 
This is related to the type of work that they do, their professional qualifications that might make them exempt, the amount of discretion they have, budgetary authority, ability to hire and fire. There's a, a great resources directly on the Department of Labor's website. And someone needs to be able to pass all three of the duties tests, the salary basis test, and the salary level test to be classified as exempt. This is the number one question that we get at Deep End Talent Strategies. We probably have a conversation about exempt versus non-exempt no less than five times a week. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us at hello at deependstrategies.com. And so those are the things I wanted to cover about the key developments in 2023. If you have any additional questions or other ideas for Ask Deets segments, please let us know. I wanted to give you a free gift here. If you scan the QR code, it will take you to a checklist and ways to make sure you have the current forms and just the whole employee life cycle of kind of best practices from application to reference checking forms to, um, to new hire to, to offboarding forms. So we hope that that's helpful. Have a wonderful 2024 and please let us know what questions you might have. Thank you.